Stitchy people, it's Jesse again at Miss Laid Pages, and this is Floss Noon River 20. Um, I have a Stitchy assistant again here today. This is a different one. Uh, looks like the same cat, but it is actually a different cat. I have two black cats. Um, today I have Loki with me. Um, last time it was Momo. Uh, Luna is a tortoise shell, so you would absolutely know if it was her. But anyway, uh, it's Wednesday, August 5th. Uh, as I'm filming this, it'll probably be a couple days later when you actually see this, but I'm so happy to, um, to have you here with me today. And I'm just going to go over the regular cross-stitchy stuff. So um, I, ha I actually have a cheat sheet here today because I forgot so many things last time. So um, let's talk about, let's get right into uh, what am I listening to? So um, it's only been a week or so since I did my last video, so I haven't listened to or read or watched too awfully much. Um, I did watch a really interesting episode of um, Last Week Tonight from John Oliver on HBO. Um, and the only reason I mention it is because he did a really interesting segment this past Sunday on um, U.S. history and how it has been mistold throughout um, the U.S., um, which is eye-opening and shocking and infuriating all at the same time. So um, it's a really interesting watch. I would urge you, especially if you're like me and you are from a southern state um, and you're, uh, you're pretty sure that perhaps you were taught either inadequately or incorrectly um, U.S. history as you were growing up. Um, the more I learned, the more I realized what they told me in school was either completely missing the point or was completely inaccurate. So, uh, so this week's what I'm listening to is John Oliver. Go check out uh, the latest episode from Sunday, August 2nd uh, to learn a little bit more about U.S. history. So, and yeah. <laughs> Uh, looking to, I'm looking to get some more audiobooks soon, so if you have suggestions, and that can be any kind of suggestions, um, I don't, I'm not one of those folks that prefers, um, you know, fluffy romance or, or stuff like that, but if you have fantasy or sci-fi or nonfiction or anti-racism or anything, um, suggestions like that for me, uh, drop those in the comments, I'd be happy to check that out. I think my Audible account just got re-upped for the year, so I have lots and lots of credits available, so looking for new stuff to listen to. Um, let's see, so Happy Mail. I do have a Happy Mail correction. So the last couple of videos I've been talking about wondering where my latest Kate, um, my, my mailings from latest Kate were. It turns out that Jessie unsubscribed herself from the latest Kate, uh, or at least that level of Patreon subscription. So that's why I haven't been getting mailings. Um, it's not because the mail is slow. It's not because Kate's behind. It's because Jessie messed up. <laughs> so that's why I haven't gotten them. So I need to I need to look at my Patreon subscriptions and maybe uh, maybe switch some stuff up. I think what happened was I added in Ink Circles because I discovered that Ink Circles had a Patreon um, and that Tracy was doing some free patterns for her Patreon members. And so I think I swapped some stuff up and then completely forgot that I was no longer getting mailings from the latest Kate. So we'll have to see how that goes. So no mail from the latest Kate, but I do have some really really fun mail that I got from a fellow floss tuber through a fellow floss tuber. <laughs> so this is really fun. If you follow um, Michelle Bendy Stitchy um, over on her floss tube, she does, um, she supports a new charity every month pretty much. And then she does these auctions in addition to various other things um, on her uh, on her floss tube. She does these auctions on her Instagram page where she gives, not gives away, she puts up uh, various kits and project bags and flosses and yarns and whatever she has on hand that has either been given to her to do, to to use for auctions or that she's destashing um you know all this sort of stuff she puts up for auctions to raise money for charity so last month uh the charity was um she was working with bello sano uh, and the bello stitchers to raise money for the cleveland clinic in ohio for cancer research um, so one of the things that she put up for auction i actually won and it was funny because she had put it up for auction previously for another charity aaron mcdaniel over at two martini stitcher won that kit and stitched it and then put the kit back together and gave it back to Michelle to then re-auction. So I got the re-auctioned item. And so this is what I won. Let me take it out of the bag. Well, I'll just show you. So it's got the pattern, but it's also got fabric and flosses. And Aaron um, kept the, the needle minder that originally came with it and then threw in um, a scissor bob here.
So yeah, so it came with um, a pattern, a paper pattern. So this is Be Happy, which is from the Summer House Stitch Works. And it's charted in DMC floss for 32 count linen. And it's super cute. I love this pattern. And I had seen it when it originally went up and I was like, I think I, I think I bid on it, but I didn't bid really high because I wanted it, but I didn't want it that bad. And then when I saw it pop up again, I was like, okay, I, I have to try to win it this time. And so um, it comes with all the DMC flosses and these are really pretty. I actually like these better just in person than I like, than um, I think they look better in person than they do on the model stitch. And it's possible that the model stitch is not stitched in DMC. I'm struggling, I'm sorry. It's possible that the model stitch is not in DMC and that might be the difference in the colors. But, like that. I especially love this blue. Not that blue, this blue. <laughs> this really rich blue is gorgeous. So it comes with all the DMC flosses because Erin didn't use those. I think she replaced um, the call for colors with her own colors. And she also used her own fabric. So the original fabric that came with the kit um, is here. And this is a piece of 13 by 8. It's appearing to be linen. I don't know if it's, oh, the other side of the tag. 32 count platinum linen. I'm not sure if this is weak style works. Um, or what, but it's a piece of 32 count platinum. So I got the fabric, I got the flosses, I got the pattern. Is this the call for fabric? No, okay, so the call for fabric is Velt from Picture This Plus, which I'm almost positive is not this. Um, well, I'm definitely positive it's not. I'm pretty sure it's not Picture This Plus either, but it's definitely not the call for fabric and the DMC flosses. And then let me show you this scissor, this scissor fob. I'm not sure if Erin made this herself. Um, regardless, it's really, really gorgeous and it's super cute and it totally goes with the pattern. So as you see, there's yellow and silver and gray. And then I can get this too. There we go. And there's a little bee. Okay, focus. Focus. Uh, oh, there we go. Maybe. There we go. Look how cute that bee is. So, um, I don't usually use scissor fobs, but this is super cute, so I'm going to find a way to use it. Um, it's a little too heavy to use for um, a stitch marker, unfortunately, otherwise I'd just hang it on my, on my knitting. Um, but yeah, super cute. So this was really, really fun. Like I said, that was it to benefit the Cleveland Clinic for Cancer Research um, as part of the um, Velosano um, fundraising project that Michelle was involved in. And um, as a side note to that, um, I got involved in the last um, three or four weeks, I guess, um, with um, donating some extra stuff or extra um, money to the Velosana project through <clears throat> these um, Zoom, these stitchy Zoom chats that the Velo Stitchers were doing. And um, let me tell y'all, if you ever have a chance to get on a Zoom call with Michelle of Bendy Stitchy and Aaron McDaniel of Two Martini Stitcher, and let's see, there were, um, uh, who all was there? So it was Resist Stitch and it was Deanna Walter of Darling and Whimsy Design, and um, Abby Topknot from Topknot Stitchery, and just, oh my gosh, so many, and Rachel Raycraft, of course, <laughs> she's my gateway to most of these things, um, and Rachel Raycraft, so um, it was really, really awesome to get a chance to to sit in a Zoom chat and just like, you know, stitch and hang out and all that sort of stuff, um, so that was a really awesome thing that the Velo Stitchers did to raise additional money, because um, it was basically set up so that um, it was limited to 20 people, and you just had to donate $5 to the cause um, to, to be able to get in at least $5, to the cause. Um, so in addition to all the various other fundraising things that they did, like Rachel had a campaign going where she was spending a hundred hours on her heaven and earth design, uh, which she made. Congratulations, Rachel. She got her hundred hours. Erin was also working a hundred hours on a heaven and earth design. 
she also made her hundred hours so congratulations Erin um, so they did some they did some amazing fundraising um, and they did these chats as part of that and it was so fun and even though meeting the people and hanging out um, and and just kind of like having a good time that was the absolute best part but it doesn't hurt that there were also door prizes <laughs> And I won a couple of door prizes, which I'm super excited about. I never win anything, so it's super, super fun. Um, one door prize was a gift certificate to um, Top Knot Stitchery, so I have placed that order. Um, and I was going to put pictures in here of what I've ordered, but I'll wait until it comes in. Um, I ordered a couple of really cool new patterns, uh, one of which is a Halloween theme pattern, the other of which uh, you may have already seen on Michelle's um, floss tube. She is, uh, she's been promoting it heavily because it does um, benefit folks with cancer and uh, uh, folks who have family with cancer. Uh, so I bought that pattern as well that I will absolutely show you once it comes in. I also bought a special needle, mi needle minder uh, from Top Knot Stitchery that I will talk about once it comes in. Um, <clears throat> so it's related to, uh, to future high tea plans. So I'll talk about that later. So yeah, the Velo Stitchers are fantastic. Um, depending on how things go next year, if they're able to do another virtual race like they did this year, I might see if I can jump in on that and try to help raise money for them as well. So, um, definitely check out Michelle Bendy's Instagram for more auctions going forward. Um, I have won a second auction. Actually, I'm sort of like a third or second place uh, winner of, uh, of another auction this past week. Um, there was this really awesome bag that um, one of her friends Cassie had made and a couple of us had bid on it but Instagram did some weird things and Michelle never saw those bids. So the official winner was um, I don't remember her name, I apologize. Um, but the official winner obviously got the official bag, but um, the others of us let Michelle know that we had bid, but the bids had disappeared somewhere. So Michelle, being the incredibly generous and kind person that she is, she talked to Cassie, who happened to have extra fabric, who happened to be willing and, um, and able to make additional bags. And so what Michelle did to try to smooth over that, um, that Instagram faux pas, um, or not faux pas, but the, the Instagram glitch, um, was to actually offer the other two of us um, a bag in um, in addition to the original winner. So all three of us made donations, um, and I, I added a little bit more to my donation because that was just above and beyond. So because I, the only reason I even mentioned anything in the comments was because I didn't want the other person whose, whose bid had been missed to feel like she was being singled out at all. I just wanted her to know Instagram has problems, it's all good, um, but Michelle went so far above and beyond to try to make it better for everybody. Um, so I made an additional donation and this month's charity is the Child Rescue Fund, definitely another worthy cause, so check her out for additional auctions. Um, there will definitely be all kinds of fun stuff up for auction um, to to uh, give you more incentive to donate for, for that cause. So <clears throat> that's what's going on right now. That's the happy mail. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, so... Um, so one of the, the door prizes that I got was the, um, the gift card. Another door prize that I won was actually um, any pattern that I cared for out of um, Deanna Walter's Darling and Whimsy Etsy shop. Um, she's a fantastic designer. You may recognize her name and her, um, and her design name from both Rolodex Stitches and from Michelle Bendy Stitchy. So Deanna Walter and design, um, Darling Whimsy Design is who is responsible for the Quirky Quakers patterns, of which there are two currently. One is the um, the Puffin, which Rolodex, Carlite Rolodex Stitches and, and, um, and Michelle Bendy Stitchy have both turned into a pork, which is just cute and hilarious. Um, the second pattern is a hedgehog and I was lucky enough to get to see a preview of what the third pattern is. So that's very exciting. It's super cute. It's going to be fun. I think it's coming out soon. Um, I don't know the specific date. So yeah. So getting in on those Zoom chats was uh, fun and exciting and beneficial in so many ways, more than just, um, more than 
more than the door prizes. Um, it was just really nice to get to know some additional, um, some new stitchers that I haven't, hadn't talked to. Um, they're not new stitchers to get to know <laughs> new people, um, that I hadn't gotten a chance to connect with in, in like a one-on-one -on -one kind of way. So that was really super fun. Um, and to do that in benefit of cancer research is, is even better. So super awesome. So like I mentioned before, because uh, I'm going to talk about whips now. So I mentioned last time that uh, my main plan for August is to work on my model stitch. So I don't have a lot of whips to show you because mostly I've been working on that model and I can't show you that yet. Um, I'm hoping to put together a video once everything's done and I've sent it in and I've been given the go ahead to share pictures. I'm hoping to, sorry. I tried to do a stabilize, I tried to stabilize the camera, but it wasn't working for me. So I just have the camera right back where it was and it bounces every time I touch anything. So, um, but yeah, so I'm hoping to have a video of a, a progress video of the model stitch once it's all said and done, but that probably won't be till mid September, or October. So I did work on um, my stitch for uh, my friend who had the baby in June. So, um, not a ton of progress. Theoretically, I should have been done with this by now, but um, I've been spending most of my time on the model stitch. And um, it took me more time to get through the yoga corns than I had expected. I haven't done the back stitch on my one yoga corn um, because it was really time to put that down and start working on the model stitch again. Um, and because of migraines and headaches and various things. I just, it took longer than I expected. So this is also not as far along as I expected, but I do have two full words now. We have tiny, we have overlord. I started the W, um, that will come sometime soon. So um, I don't know if I'll actually be working on this before I um, finish the model stitch, probably at some point, because probably at some point I will decide that I'm tired of working on the model stitch and need a break. Um, but I'm trying to get as much steam in that as I can. And, um, if I can manage it, I want to do like an infographic thing on the, for the, um, for the model stitch, just so I can be like, so I'm X percent, um, done with the model stitch. We'll see if that happens for this video. It might be next video, but anyway. So this is the only whip I have to show you, but there's progress. Um, and yeah, so hopefully at some point I will, I will have a stitchometer over here where you can see my progress on the model stitch. So at least I can show you something because <laughs> August could be pretty boring otherwise. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that's the whips. That's all the whips that I have right now. But uh, let's talk about some plans. So a bunch of folks, and I forget who instigated this. It might have been Aaron, um, Aaron McDaniel to Martini Stitcher, but I'm not positive. Um, this whole arbitrary August thing. Um, actually, I think it was Aaron because she was so tired of working on that heaven and earth design that she just needed to work on anything else. And so what a lot of folks are doing is they're putting all of their whips into a tiny decisions wheel and just pressing the button and letting that determine what they're working on next. Well, I can't do arbitrary August. I have to do very intentional, <laughs> very intentional, totally intentional August is what I'm going to call it. <laughs> um, because I do, um, the model stitch, I think, is doesn't have to be complete until the middle of September. My goal is to finish it by the end of August. I would like to get it out earlier, earlier rather than later if I can. So, yeah, so I'm doing totally intentional August. I'm not doing arbitrary August. Now, if I get the model stitch finished, um, then I might join in on arbitrary August, which could be fun, um, but I don't know. Every time I pick up one of my whips, except for, I know, I'm getting kind of tired of Tiny Overlord, um, but for the most part, anytime I pick up any of my other whips, I'm like, oh, this would be fun to work on. I should work on this. So maybe I will do an arbitrary thing just so I can let something else decide because sometimes I get decision paralysis and then nothing happens. So maybe you all know how that feels. So yeah, not very arbitrary for me in August, totally intentional for August. Um, I'm thinking for September, um, since my August plans are completely laid out at this point, I'm starting to plan September. Um, I'm thinking what I might do is um, season of smalls for September. 
<laughs> um, one, because I love working on small things, um, because you get the stitch done, you get the finish. It's, um, it's really, really satisfying to work on something small and especially something that if you pick it up the beginning of a day and then at the end of the day, it's done. It's like a, like, it's totally a thrill. Um, maybe not everybody feels that way. If you're a process stitcher versus a, a production stitcher, I think that's, yeah. Um, yeah, if you're a process stitcher, that might not be your jam, but um, I really, I enjoy both, um, but a finish is really thrilling. I love getting a finish. So I really want to do a whole bunch of smalls, and I had thought about saving this for um, the next 24 hours of cross stitch. So I might, I might still do it for the next 24 hours of cross stitch as well. I'm talking too fast. I'm getting my work all blah, blah, blah. Um, <clears throat> so I might also do it for uh, the next 24 hours of cross stitch but that's not going to be till November and so I have this like I have this need to do all the smalls and um, I don't want to wait till November so I think I, I think September is going to be the season of smalls and I'm just going to do any and every small that I can kit up between now and then uh, there are a couple of things that I have planned um, I have a couple of Lizzie Kate's already kitted up I have um, the Quirky Quakers, number one, the Puffin that I want to do. I have multiple free patterns from Ink Circles um, that are smalls that I got as free patterns from Patreon. And those I want to do. And what else? Excuse me. Oh, I also just joined the Shannon Christine uh, Christmas Ornament Club. If you join, uh, it starts August 1st, ends December 31st. And the way it's set up is that for $8 a month for each of those months, you get two 50 by 50 um, Christmas ornament patterns. Um, and then I think if you sign up and then join the Facebook group as well, you get additional um, free patterns through the Facebook group, but only if you sign up for the subscription to start with. So, um, and you have to sign up. I should probably just send you to the Facebook group. <laughs> But basically, it starts in August, so the first two patterns come out in August. But if you don't sign up till September, you do not get September. You do not get August pattern. You only get September forward. So keep that in mind. If you if you feel like you're going to want all the patterns, and she has actually um, she has pictures of the patterns available on the sign up page, so it's not a surprise. You'll know exactly what you're getting. So if you look at the patterns and you realize that you don't want anything until the November patterns, then just wait till November and sign up. So. It's as easy as that but um, yeah so there are some of those that I want to do I've already signed up so I should be able to get all of the patterns as well as whatever free patterns and yeah um, and there's also I think there's still some be well and stitch patterns that I want to do too so I'm not necessarily going to set a specific goal number I'm basically just going to kit up as many smalls as I possibly can and then try to stitch as many of them during September as I possibly can so, um, and I'm going to call that hashtag season of smalls. That's what it is. <laughs> so that's September. Um, and then, yeah, October, we're going to start with high tea. I'll talk about that more um, closer to October. It's too early. And then after that, we'll, we'll find out what is trending and who's doing what and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm not a huge um, Christmas stitcher. I'm not even a huge Halloween stitcher. I'm much more of like a fall autumn person. Um, but I also tend to stitch with the season rather than in preparation for the season. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, this will be the first year that I'm actually making plans for stitching um, during the holiday season. So I have no idea what will happen. But yeah, so those are the plans going forward. And last but not least, um, this is going to be a quick one because it's only been a week since we talked last. So <laughs> last but not least, let's talk about some purchases. It may also be going faster because I actually wrote myself a cheat sheet instead of just trying to remember. <laughs> so um, yeah, so let's talk purchases. Um, I again made purchases from uh, Hand Dyed by Rolanda and I have even more stuff coming from Hand Dyed by Rolanda um, on the way now. Um, because after I made purchases on Thursday, she posted new silk packs, limited edition silk packs on Saturday or Sunday. So of course I had to purchase more. So, <laughs> um, let's see for you this week. I have, pardon me while I open the package. I have two pieces of fabric and some floss from hand dyed by Rolanda. 
<clears throat> over on Etsy. And this week I think I got, um, I got Cashel Linen because I enjoyed so much working on my um, Chinese Zodiac Sal that is on Picture This Plus Cashel that I decided I should get a couple more pieces of Cashel to play with. So um, let's do, actually let's do the floss first. So I got two skeins of this gorgeous cotton floss. This is a limited edition colorway. And I didn't like it at first when I saw it in the, the skeins, but when I saw it in the hank, like the larger hank and you could see really the color progression I was like oh that's gorgeous so I did end up getting two hanks of this gorgeous gorgeous color the colors are a little bit blown out because you're getting that like super bright pink um, instead of the okay there we go so there's orange there's pink there's deep purple there's a lighter purple there's magenta gorgeous gorgeous colors so it's almost like purple flames it's just really it's gorgeous I can't wait to to find something to stitch that with actually I just realized that was another small that I want to work on in September um who is it that put it out is it Lindy Stitches I believe um I believe it's Lindy Stitches did a pattern okay focus okay did a pattern um that was a benefit pattern for uh, justice for Brianna Taylor. Um, and the pattern says, say her name, Brianna Taylor. Um, and Michelle Bendy Stitchy has already stitched this. I know several several of the regular floss tubers have already stitched this. Um, I have not yet, but I have now purchased the pattern. The pattern goes to benefit several different charities. Um, you can check that out either on Lindy Stitches or um, Abby Topknot Stitcher. Um, <clears throat> various places have that pattern for sale and are donating to charity um, so I purchased that pattern I think this this might be a really gorgeous color to use for that fiery and bright and just full of life and I think I think that might be good for that pattern so <clears throat> yeah so we'll think about that and then I also got two pieces of um, 28 Oh, this is Alma. I forgot that I bought an, so bought an, I forgot that I bought Alma. So the interesting thing, the reason that I got this, is because based on Rolanda's description, Alma has the same fabric content as Jobelin, but it has the look and feel of linen. So um, I decided to try that and see what that would be like. So this is twenty eight. It's a 16 by 20 piece, and these are really interesting colorways, too. Look at that. Is it focused? Sort of? Not really. I can't see the camera and see if it's focused. <laughs> I think that it's so bright outside, I think I'm having some issues. But anyway, you get the idea. So it's sort of pink, purple, gray, um, which I think will be really good for some spooky Halloween something. Um, and it does have, it has very much the, um, the look of linen. So we've got the thicker and thinner fibers, just like you would expect in linen. Um, but it does have a smoother feel and a thicker feel than, um, than maybe cashel or something like that. So that's interesting. I'm very curious to work on this and see what it's what it's like to stitch on. This seems like it would feel good to work on in hand, um, so I might I might cut it into some small pieces and do something like that. And this is this is also Alma, 28 count, same size piece, and that is really cool. So we've got some light pinks, some magentas, some purples, a little bit of orange kind of going on in there. Really cool. And it's interesting, you can kind of tell based on the colors um, and how the colors have turned out that this isn't your traditional linen because the colors are, um, they're pretty saturated, but they're not as intense um, as you usually get on a linen fabric. So it's interesting. So they're darker than you would normally see on a Jobelin or a um, um, Lugana. I'm trying to get it to focus. That's a little bit better. Okay. That was a 
is it? Okay. So the color is um, is not as pale as it would be on a Jovalin or a Lugana, but it's also not as intense as it would be on linen. So it's somewhere kind of in between. Let's see. So yeah, really super interested to, to stitch on these and see how that goes. So those are fun. I'm excited about that. I think both of those are maybe a little too loud if I'm going to use this for the um, for the Brianna Taylor stitch, but we we will see. I buy a lot of fabric without knowing exactly what I'm going to use it for. <laughs> I also have some um, some neutrals and some more plain colors that would really make that um, that cotton pop. So we'll see. Okay, last thing, last thing. So if you are familiar with Lindy stitches at all, she recently put out the cutest pattern on earth which is two blue footed boobies um and the pattern is called beach dance but everybody's calling it the booby pattern or um yeah they're calling it the booby pattern because it's blue footed boobies and um the a really cool thing that happened was that she worked together with the 805 stitcher to create these awesome awesome bags um, project bags now i didn't find out about them until after the bags were sold out so it was kind of sad but i messaged um, I messaged Lindy Stitches and just asked, hey, do you think you might get, I know they're limited edition, limited edition, but do you think you might make any more at some point? Um, you know, because if you don't ask, the answer is always no, right? And so come to find out, um, she was able to, to work out a deal where, where potentially they're going to make more bags. Um, so I prepaid for a bag. I don't have that bag now. That's not what I'm going to show you. <laughs> Uh, Rachel at some point in the relatively near future will be showing you a bag um, but, <laughs> um, but yeah so I don't have that bag I will hopefully have that bag at some point in the future um, there are some questions as to you know getting like basically sourcing some of the pieces um, but as long as they're able to make those I will get one at some point in the future but um, that turned me on to the 805 stitcher who makes these fantastic fantastic project bags and you've probably seen them on um, Michelle Bendy's pay or her uh, floss tube because I know she's talked about these bags before um, so I went to um, I went to the 805 stitcher on Etsy and I got a couple of project bags so let me show you what I got um, as usual in the poly bag but also as I like to do I left it in its original wrapping so this is exactly how it came to me I may not show you my address <clears throat> no addresses people so um, this is how she packaged it and it has a cute little flamingo that says thank you <laughs> okay a little bit of paper Lots of paper. <laughs> okay. So, um, oh my gosh, they came with matching needle miners. I didn't know that was going to happen. Okay. <laughs> let me let me separate this out. So there's a thank you note. Super cute thank you note. Why are you not? It must be the light. The light makes it really because I'm so white. Okay, and she just says thank you, and if I use the bags um, uh, for projects, she'd like to know what bag, what projects I use the bags for and to, uh, to tag her on pictures on Instagram. So, super cute. Super nice. So, I got two different size bags. I got a small one and a larger one. So, this one, look at this. Oh, look at that. I don't normally go in for Halloween themed stuff, but that's what she's got up now, and she had a couple of patterns that I really liked. So that's super cute, the cute little witch, and you got the skeletons with the like lemonade stand down here, and the pumpkins and stuff. And then here's the front, she makes these awesome um, vinyl fronted bags, and they are so, like the stitching is just fantastic on these, so it's super straight, um, the corners are really nice and square, and um, I love the zipper, and she does these little hang tags which are super cute, the little heart. And then as you can see, there's, there's a coordinating needle minder in here, which I had no idea that was gonna come with these. Maybe I just didn't read the description. I didn't care, I was like, I just want a bag. <laughs> yeah, so here's an awesome, awesome needle minder that came with it as well. And it goes right with the fabric. 
So I'm sure probably she makes those out of scraps. It's super cute. So yeah, this is kind of like a, a small project or notions bag. I would totally use this for anything I was stitching in hand. Um, so the couple of smalls that I'm going to be doing in September, I'll probably use, um, I'll probably use this for some of those. Super nice. The zipper is nice and strong too, and it's just very well made. I'm really, really, really happy with that. I especially love this purple uh, fabric inside. I like the detail of having it coordinate and everything. So that's the small bag. And then here's the big bag. I don't know if you can really tell on the front, but you're going to see on the back. How cute is that inner fabric? It's so cute. And this is probably would fit an 8x8 Q snap, but I don't think it would fit um, an 11 by 11 I'd have to try. Um, it'd be a tight fit because it's a flat bag, but would definitely fit an 8x8 or anything flat. It's super cute. And watch, 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 watch. Look, look. Oh, how cute are they? How cute are they? Little fluff ball black cats with pumpkins. Oh my gosh, I can't get over it. Cannot. I cannot. And then, and then, oh. <laughs> Look at those eyes. Okay, so as a black cat, um, as, as someone who is owned by two black cats, um, I have a special <laughs> place in my heart for black cats. But especially cute little puff balls that are basically just eyes. Oh my gosh. How cute. So yeah, how could I not? How could I not? Yeah, so super happy with these bags. And again, the corners, like the corners are fantastic, but like the overall construction is just really, really nice. Very, very happy with it. So yeah, super happy. I will definitely be purchasing more from uh, 805 Stitchery and you should totally check her out as well. So yeah, super happy with that. So you get my, my first hand reaction because I literally had not opened this yet, as you could see. So, <clears throat> and actually right now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my brand new fabric and floss in this bag to protect it because I'm running out of places to put fabric. I need to stop buying fabric, y'all. So, okay folks, well, that is all I have for you today. And um, I'm so happy that you joined me today. If you are already working on your plans for, uh, for September and October, then um, be ha I would love to hear about that below. Um, also, if you're doing arbitrary August or totally intentional August or anything in between, uh, I would love to hear about that. And let me know about new designers and new patterns and new stuff that you're working on. I want to hear about all of it. Oh, one last thing. <laughs> <laughs> I almost forgot. I actually, I haven't done a shop update in forever. Um, I'm still doing my Etsy shop. It's been open all this time. I have reopened um, shipping to Canada. I'm currently not shipping overseas just because the shipping times are so long and there are some issues with um, other countries being concerned about things that are going on in the US, which is totally understandable. Um, so just to prevent any issues with shipping and stuff, I'm not shipping overseas at the moment. But I absolutely will ship to Canada, ship, um, and I'll ship domestically throughout the United States. Um, so there's all of that, but it is August, so I have a new Dinky Dyes Silk Pack. Um, silk of the Month, um, and I call this the Collect the Catalog Silk of the Month Club. Um, on Etsy, I can't do subscriptions, so if you purchase on Etsy, it's just a one-time purchase. You get that month's floss. If you want the next month's floss, you have to come back to Etsy and purchase it, but I am set up now that I can set you up with a recurring um, subscription. Um, it's it's technically a recurring invoice. It works more like your um, your Fabric of the Month clubs like Brandy and um, uh, Misty at Mystic Fabrics do where basically I will set up an invoice for you in PayPal. You'll get invoiced on a certain date of the month and as long as you pay by a certain other date then you'll get your floss, um, all that sort of stuff. So, But these are this month's colors and of course it's going to be too shiny. Definitely take a look at my Etsy shop if it's something you're interested in. Um, the colors are the blue or the green here, blue. Um, the green here is called Benda. And then this color on the end, which is yellow and blue and green, uh, that is Bird of Paradise. And then we have um, 
black coral, which is this one that is actually pretty solid black, and then um, black opal is this really kind of fluorescent looking color there. So those are available now in the Etsy shop. Um, and if you're interested in setting up a recurring um, invoice, a, a subscription basically, um, then just email me at misleadpages at gmail.com. I'm happy to set that up for you. And also um, hope to have a whole bunch of autumn and Halloween theme patterns up in the shop within the next week or two. Um, I'm trying to get all of the patterns I have on hand in the shop, which takes quite a while. So um, I also have new needle minders coming at some point. <laughs> um, lots of different stuff coming, so definitely check out the shop if you have an inclination. Um, every purchase that you make helps to um, to help me keep doing things like this. Um, helps me to keep buying things to show you, helps me to keep being able to do floss tube and all that sort of stuff. So. So far, I've been having a pretty good year. I appreciate all the support that you all have already given me, both just by watching Floss Tube and also by actually making purchases. Um, every little bit just helps me get closer to being able to live my dream, so I appreciate it. So, okay, that really is all for me this time. <laughs> so I appreciate you all so much. I hope you're staying healthy and safe and well, and, uh, you know, I'll see you next time.